Okay, folks, we have another experimental session for you here. This is sort of an unusual creature. I'm going to show you where it actually is from here. It's from a Kickstarter from a little while ago. So this is Spawn of Shark Depede, and it was sculpted here by Clint McLean. It was about, I think it was seven or eight of these. Kathy actually painted that. The bat shark you already saw in a previous video, doing that in oils. But here we've got the wear shark. And what I want to do with this is I go back to my scene here. You can see I've got some references in the corners. And this is what I want to try. I ended up with this stuff on accident, this pearl white. Right here, I have no idea if it's going to work the way I visualize that. It may or may not. If I don't like how it turns out, I can always just paint right over it. We're going to use usual mix of secret weapon paints here. And we've got some other Reaper favorites, blue and gray liner. This one's kind of a nifty one, too. I think it might work well for along the back. And I've got this one here, this engine grime. That could make it a little more brownish. And if I feel the need to, might even go with some brown liner. Probably will have it out there since blue and brown together make black. This is his base right here. I'm going to be doing some finish work on this after he's actually placed on it. So these are actual seashells. The moss here. It's actually some dried lichen that Michael Harbour generously donated to the cause. As usual, we're going to be working with our craft brushes. You can see they are quite the bargain. Usually just get them directly from the Hobby Lobby website. And once they get a little bit worn down and beat up here, you can see they sort of turn into a filbert brush. So they kind of start out like this. A nice sharp point on them and nifty filbert. So we're going to use both both elements there. That's kind of it on the materials. I'm just going to get myself some water out here on the palette and we'll st start up on this project here. I'm not going to paint the whole thing because it's just going to be a couple hours long but it should give us a decent idea on the success of our pearl white. So let's give this a shot. Let's get some colors out on the palette, including the pearl white. I don't know if you can see that. So what I'm going to do is actually take another one of my small palette trays here. I'm going to scoop this up put it out here, get it close to the camera. Now the, obviously the lights are sort of doing some things of this, but see how there's a little bit of, check this out, it's got a little bit of opalescence to it. And that's what I want to see. I'm going to see if that's going to give me the effect that I want. So let's put out a few other colors here. I'm going to do with the, the secret weapon grays. I'm going to go with the, this one is rubber. There's also the tire black. So we're going to go with these two right here. I'm going to throw out a gray liner like so. And start getting some water in on this. I'm not going to mix the pearl in here just yet. What I like about the secret weapon is yeah, I'm, I'm starting to water these down. So we're going to do a sort of a semi-wash, semi-glaze here. So we're just going to water these down. There's our gray liner. can do the same thing. In some ways the formulation just it reminds me of the secret weapon paints. They dry super flat. They hold up really well when you water them down. As I got my pictures up in the corners so I sort of have to, I mean, obviously sharks don't have arms and legs, so I've got to maybe treat these like the fin that's over here. It seems like that top of that fin is dark, so let's, let's just start to throw this on right here. 
I'll grab maybe some more water. You could use some kind of a... I have Liquitex Flow Improver and I know Reaper makes a Flow Improver. Lots of companies make those. Used to use those all the time, but lately I've kind of gotten away from that. So, like usual, I've got my trusty makeup sponges and I'm going to work on this in sections. I'm going to wipe that away so there's not, not a hard border. Because this, I want, I want to see what I can do with this here. So here's my gray liner. This is obviously a little bit wet into wet. I just want to see what happens right at this of the face. Looks like I'm going to right here mark that off and get back in here with my other grays and just see I'm letting this marbleize and mix together on its own see what we got on the other side and I don't know well I think I'm gonna have to also go with an equally hard edge on this. So there'll be subsequent glazes over the top of this too. You're also going to see the the pearl color. I might just throw that as almost a semi-glaze over the top too. So see I think this whole back of that's going to just remain lighter. So that, that's a little bit of a change I think from the original initial initial thoughts on that. So remember I always got my sponge handy here. Just trying to avoid a hard edge. See like here, potentially a hard edge. That's gone now. See it really absorbs the paint pretty nice. Takes that away. See it's, it's sort of mixing on its own a little bit here. And obviously I've got claws to deal with here. Probably going to make these darker some. That's where I'm going with the gray liner. So this is what I have to decide in this early phase. Sort of map things out. Now you can only can't get too crazy with the shark color or with colors on this because it still has to read as a shark. Which means I have to stick in these these bluish gray range. I guess some people call it a limited palette. I kind of shy away from using that expression. It just limited palette, restricted palette. I I just sometimes call it a muted palette. So this was originally primed with the usual Badger Steino Res and. Since there's a million different colors, well, 12, unless he's added some more and didn't tell me, which I think maybe he has, all those different color primers give me lots of color options. So I think I took some of the blue, some of the gray, some of the white, and it's a, it's a slate blue also. So see how I'm... Let's turn this around. So see I have no demarcation line here, and now... Got something a little more solid. I'm going to go back to my lighter secret weapon grays. Work my way down the front of this arm here, which sharks don't actually have. And work this all the way down. I think I'm going to go all the way down to the hand. Got a sponge here, and this is where I'm going to actually remove some of that so now it starts to create a little bit of shading. Not quite sure if I want to have this line be quite so bold. I also want it to be incomplete because that's what I'm seeing, especially this picture to the upper left hand side. So that's do this and then we can take a look and 
compared to what we had on the other side. So here there's just not much definition at all, but that was just that was just setting up this. And even with the section on his back, I didn't want to get too too deeply involved in that because see, I'm gonna wipe out some edges here just with the wet it wetted down brush and kind of sponge it away. Because I want to see, this is, I want to see what happens with that pearl stuff right off the bat. I don't want to do a bunch of things, and then so let's see what we got here. So this tail, looking at the tail here, it's kind of split on the colors. So I'm gonna take some of that away, leave some of that like so. Grandma sponge remove some excess and this is uh, the other reason why I wanted the, the pearl stuff so see how that's starting to look really flat there so there's all these little nodules and, and textures on this that maybe the pearl is a way to bring those out I'll also obviously be painting in some of that Texture too, highlighting those and giving them some shading. But I want to see if the pearl color can also. See, this is almost pure, pure gray liner here. And sometimes this is going to be rotated in a weird viewpoint for you because I need to need to be able to see what I'm doing and be able to reach what I'm doing. So see, just like I did on the other side, I'm going to let that blend together. Let me take the sponge, control it, get rid of some of the excess. Let's bring down our different secret weapon grays. Yeah. And was slightly slightly darker here, but again they want this line to be incomplete. So see I'm basically burning away some of that, taking some of that away. Hard edge, soft edge. And like I did on the other hand, all the way down. And take some away. I also have smaller sponges. Let me get into tighter areas, although I think I've shown you in the past that you can cut down these big sponges and change the shape on those too. So see how I just kind of sponge that away. And let's get some gray liner. Right here's the sail that makes kind of a nice nice dark there. And get that blended in. So it's it's a little little bit of wet into wet even though it's so let's see. Well now the sculpt, this is where the sculpt kind of diverges from the shark here a bit. Because I'm seeing where the gills are. The gills on the great white there actually those actually have some coverage on them. See so that that should almost all be in the gray, but you know, we have to we have to follow the sculpt also. That's that's the tricky thing when you're trying to use references of actual creatures to do fantasy beasts, but that's that's also kind of part of the fun. So just like I did on the other side. This is why I like to have just all the colors out on the palette. And as usual, well, that I don't do the the wet palette thing. You can see I already painted very much a watercolor style, anyways. So. There's plenty of water on the palette already. Don't need more. 
So you're just letting those mix together. We have some overlay. See if we can just sponge away some of that. It brings back some of the original primer color, which is neat. So the tail here, gonna I can lace them down, remove some. I can even use my finger. I don't want to go reach for a sponge. Let's darken this down a bit. And we're just going to go with this for right now. And I'm going to let this settle down, let it dry a little bit. And then actually going to cover up some of that. Because it sort of operates like a wet palette now. And on the underside, this is where I'm going to maybe start out with some white. So this is sort of a grayish blue. I could do the same thing with gray liner and, and another color. But let's see what happens. I take some of this. And I mix it together with my pearl white. So I don't know if you can really see that here. Let's put a little of just the plain color here. And I can see a difference. Doesn't maybe show up on camera. But as I shift this around, there's definitely a, it's sort of there's some little bit of color bouncing around there. So let's get this get that white back out. I'm gonna thin this down. Didn't bother cleaning the brush because I wanted a little bit of that leftover gray in there. And now let's start here. And the idea is the other thing I, I realized about the opalescent white there, as I'll call it. So that's kind of on the translucent side, so it doesn't necessarily cover perfectly. That is what I was hoping for. This is obviously not a dry brush. There's a ton of paint in this brush, but I'm just some kind of a feathered brush stroke head, so that's more of a salvage stroke. This is about where I'm at. And and you can see that's got a little little bit of a sparkle to it, so I didn't want this to be... So I've got the Vallejo Metal Medium, but I didn't want this to be quite that intense. Now, I don't, I don't know how much of the chest you can see. There may be parts of this where you, you won't really be able to see it, so I'll just kind of take a pass on it. Here's some of the gray leaked in, so I'm just going to mix that right in. So there, you know, I just had to make a bit of a change. Sometimes you just have to do that. So let's get a little bit of this in here. And, and it's almost, it's not like spots necessarily, but you can see where it, it sort of cuts into that. So here's, here's this side. Go to the other side. You can see it's just, it's lighter. But it doesn't have that little extra something. There's just something that that pearl white is doing. Again, since it's also a bit translucent. See how it, it's also... Well, this is another watercolor term. It's got a little bit of sedimentation to it. That's, that's good. It basically means it sort of settles down into crevices and... That's good for good for our prospects for sheeting. So this I'm lightening up this a little bit as I hit it with the pearl white. So I'm gonna take some of this. Oh, that's starting to form a, a filbert brush right there, and that's that that wide brush is letting me do that feathered stroke. So again, there's plenty of paint here. Sometimes I may have to scumble it a bit more. Let 
And again, I can always make changes there. I can water this down, make it even more translucent. Yeah, trying to get this to where you can see it. You may not necessarily be able to see it very easily. And this is just, it's, it's again, not a, not a dry brush. I'm just scumbling this over because I'm trying to get... See, it, it's this, this rough texture here. Don't necessarily want to just highlight those little nobules. Yeah, you, see, you can see those there. See here how it's almost a light around those. It's almost like weathering, you know, like you've rusted up some rivets on a vehicle. And I thought, well, but it's a were shark. It's supposed to be kind of an ancient creature. So what I'm going to do in here is cut off that little river of gray that keeps wanting to leak down in there. And then I'm going to use that, that mix, to get a little bit of shading there. And I can always do glazes over the top. So I'm going to change my grip on this here and I want you guys to be able to see this a little better I may actually slip on a glove here in a second so I can do that a little more if I get too much greasy stuff from my hands onto this it would be a little more difficult to do some of those glazing type things so I'm just going to set him down and these are just general latex gloves, nothing fancy. I have noticed that the the cheaper ones, they rip really, really, really easy. I try to get ones that aren't actually too too snug because that, that creates its own problem. Start Your hand starts to maybe sweat a little bit more. Not Not good. So here we've got this lower leg. And, and none of this is final. It's not meant to be final in any way, shape, or form. So here I might actually mix it with some of my gray color here. That's why I always like to have it out on the palette. Get the some of this all the way down to here. So, just like before, I'm going to hold him by the fin. Because I think this, the opalescent stuff here, I think it's going to give me that slightly different texture that I'm looking for. Because I didn't want it to just be another oh look. It's a, it's a gray shark with hints of blue, hints of brown. Nothing wrong with that. I just wanted to see if I could bring in just a little bit extra on that. So I'm going to take some of this out here so I can get it into this mix. See how that just went down into those little crevices right there? I can even water it down so I can still can still glaze over the top of this. And I know this this looks all very rough. If for those of you not familiar with my shaded base coat technique, I've got uh, for actually for the Patreon patrons, they they have that available to them to view. And the shaded base coat, it's it's just a thought process. It's not some hard and fast technique. There's nothing really complicated about it. You can see it's just the idea of laying down the colors as rapidly as possible. So Zach, I like this transition. So I'm, so I'm breaking with the reference here. Oh, what is that? Our artistic license, whatever, whatever that would be called. See, by adding that gray in there, it's nowhere near as light. 
because the more of the pearl white that I add, the, the lighter that's going to get. So, so here we got the underside of the face here. Let's get this for you. And remembering not to mix too much of the pearl white into this. At least at this stage, because I want to leave myself enough space. And you'll see what I mean later on. So I'm going to mix some of that gray in there. See this spot here on his inside of his leg, so it's it looks like I've lightened up everything. I have made it lighter, but there's still some type of shading there. Well, I just painted that on the glove and I can really see a little bit of sparkle there to it. I think this is going to achieve what I was hoping. Just when you look at it, you don't notice it. It's, it's then when you start to really stare at it and kind of look at it for a while then you start to notice. So again this is that it's either it's one of the lighter of the secret weapon grays there. So I'm gonna do my darker color. I wanna do a little bit of mixing on the fly here. We got these fins. So I get weather sections that it might just be too hard for you to see. I'm not going to focus in on those too much. You can see I've done a, again, some, some mixing here. Let's darken this down a little bit. I see it's it's possible to do a little wet into wet here. The tail, looking at that tail, what do we want to do? If we want to leave that darker, I mix a little bit of this. So just like with when you're using metallics. I don't use metallics very often. One of the things I always notice about that is that metal stuff, the metal flakes, it's going to get into every color that you put out there. So once this stuff gets in my water, it's going to permeate every color that I throw on here. And that's, that's okay. Let's see here again, not a dry brush. There's plenty of paint on this. I'm just kind of scumbling it across the surface. I'm just I'm looking for the texture here. And see how that I thought that was dark. The paint that I was putting on it was not dark. So I wetted that down. Now I can go back in. So see it's so I'm just kind of dabbing the brush on here. There's a bit of a transition there. So that's kind of just flat and boring. So it's a little more, again, a little more transition to it. See how that, that just breaks into a, a nice little filbert brush right there. And I'm just going to, again, Scumble that across. Do that here. Back of this leg here. So let's do the other side of the face. And I'm going to put out some new. Uh, I'm going to just put this right here and get rid of that other palette because you got a chance to see what that looks like. So throw these out. And like so. 
So I'm just going to tone down the lights here a tiny bit. Move this light away. Gonna go back into this gray. Just see it's 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 lighter, but not lighter but not white. Because again, I need to need to give myself that that space to work with. And I'm going to fill in some of the wrinkles and folds here with some of my lighter color. Back to the pearl white. So this is all an experiment. Basically a live experiment. I try to do this as often as possible. One of, the, one of the things it does is it encourages people to experiment themselves. Maybe makes them a little less hesitant to do so. I know a lot of people that phrase that I hear all the time, I didn't want to didn't want to ruin it. And that basically people kind of talk themselves out of trying things. Now that I've got this set up pretty well, I'm going to throw in a little bit more of the pearl white and see what happens. And again, it is, it's translucent. And you can see that I'm going back to that stippled approach. Yeah, it's get a little slightly darker version of this here so I didn't I don't want that to be completely smooth because there's an awful lot of texture on this it's a lot of texture there we are and as you See as I start to add a little bit more of the pearl white. I'm just going to drag the brush across here. So it's, it's lighter, but the idea is there's also more of the pearl white. And that's going to hopefully enhance the effect in some places. And and guess where I'm doing that? It's obviously centered on the face. We want that to be our center of interest. And this is why I've got the gloves, because I knew I'd have to do some manhandling on this. So again, that stippling, not a dry brush at all. You can see there's tons of paint on here. Every so often I'll water it down so I can get the flow a little bit better. So we've been working on this thing less than a half an hour but we're starting to see a few things first of all I think the the effect is what I was hoping for so I know that's a go I'm not sure how many other things I'll try and use this on stuff that's not just sea creatures, but I do actually... Well, there's a few more of these. But there's also... You know, Reaper obviously has several sea creatures. And I thought that, that could give him sort of that fish scale look, but in a less obvious way. 
So we're doing the same thing. It's almost a little bit of a cross hat. See, I'm bringing that out. Again, not a dry brush. And in these areas that are, have a little bit more shadow to them, well, not going to do that quite so much, but there is also more texture here. And as I drag this across, you're going to start to see more of the more texture. That That's the one thing we noticed about these. There's not tons and tons of little details, I suppose, on them, but there is there is a lot of texture sculpted into these in a, in a sneaky way. You don't think there is until you start to paint it. These are big solid resin pieces, if, if that's what you're curious about. They're pretty, mm, for the most part, the, the simpler ones like this are very self-explanatory where the parts connect together, you will have to fill some gaps. Now I'm going to go back over this again with further washes to darken things down. But definitely the pearl white. As I'm looking at this here, again, you can't quite see it, but from a distance it just has a shimmer. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. It has a little bit of a shimmer to it. And I, I could have, I may still do some, some green glazes on this and a few other things. But this is providing a kind of a special effect here. And I think that's, it probably looks weird on camera. But to, to, the, to the human eye here, it's really... This is, this is actually, it's, it's working better than I thought it would. So I'm just starting to work in. So I may have to ditch my stick here at, at some point. I was originally going to do this in oils. And that, then I found the pearlescent paints here. I think there might be something like that for oils. I'm going to I'm going to hunt that down, see if I can find one I was actually able to find. Well, Mig Ammo makes metallic oil paints. And those those seem to work pretty well. So here we are back around on the leg here. But I'm always I'm I just want to make sure that I do some of the other parts of this too. I think I think you'll be able to see the the mouth, so I'm gonna try and do some stuff in there. Mostly in the form of glazing. So I had to darken this down. There. These the point of these videos as I think I probably mentioned in every single one, it's it's not so much about trying to paint some a golden demon winning thing in a few hours. It's I don't even really show the entire miniature being painted. I like to call these what if. So see see how that that starts to bring out some of those little. Little nobules sculpted in there. I'm going to darken this down. Darken it down even some more. Try and get it where you can see it. And darken it down even more. And it's about context, so you can see as I was applying the stuff to it, it's even what looked really dark on the palette, once it got to the miniature, all of a sudden didn't look quite so didn't look quite so dark anymore. So I am going to 
start to do some experiments on the back here. So I'm going to do is mix a little bit of that pearl white. Because I have to see, do I like, do I want it to be where these little nobules again have a lighter color to them or darker. So I'm going to do a little bit of this. Darken it down. Just just like I mentioned before, I've sort of stained it a little bit. There's a little bit of my opal color in there, or pearl color. So let's remove some of this. And then I'll let this dry. This is a little bit of a test right here. I want to see what that's going to do. But you can't see. can't really tell what it's going to do because, well, it's, it's wet. And that's not going to give you the best perspective on it. And since I have my, always have my colors out here so I can just pick some of this up. And it's almost like a little bit of wet in the wet. Just to see, see what that's going to look like. I'm going to carry this over. Do the same here. See, and all of a sudden, where it looked, it was really dark before. Now it starts to look a bit, now it's lighter over here. And I always have my dark candy. Notice that I haven't switched brushes. I haven't gone to some super tiny brush. Look where I'm holding it. Way out here on the end. Actually, when I was in art school, if they ever caught you doing this, they would promptly take the brush away from you. And you didn't look terribly clever sitting there with no brush in your hand. That's for sure. It was a harsh way to reinforce what they were saying. So this is this is a different here. So I'm kind of brushing over the top of these. Cause when I want to I want to have two. I want to have some that have essentially lighter shading where where it should be dark, and some other sections I want it to be more kind of the traditional I guess if you want to call it that. I just want to make sure you can see this. I'm just going to move my lights a little bit here. So in some of the other videos that I've been working on there's I cut from scene to scene so you know here I just basically hope that I have it on camera for you for some of the more detailed multi-part episodes that I'm working on. Well, I actually try and get the camera lined up, make sure it's all in focus before I turn it on. And cause you only get one, one shot at it, but here... Since this is an experiment, I, I didn't actually know what was going to happen. I, I really definitely did not know how it was going to work out. So see here, I'm just going to transparently go over the top of this, break up some of these lines, because some of them are pretty solid, more solid than I want, want a little more transition there. Now, I don't know if you can really see a huge difference in what's been done. But we've got the side here. You can see a little, little less with the shading on that side. And so I only have so much time what I may do. And I normally do this when I've got something where it's almost the same on either side. It's going to be the same procedure. I can show you more. 
by just going through and doing the one side. It's also handy for you in that you get to see well, what, what does it look like now versus what it did, say, 20 minutes ago. So again, I've got my pearl white that I can mix in even into my darkest gray. Just trying to get this where you can see it and what I'm trying to do is get as many many changes as I can here. So th this is gonna almost have more of a reddish look by comparison to where maybe what I was just doing had it more of a bluish tone. Might even, uh, if I get, grab more of the, I think it's called tire black, that would almost have sort of a Prussian green look. So here, I'm just going to go into the, the, the crest of the spine. And I can tone it down. I can even tone it down a little bit more because I always have, and look where I'm holding the brush now, I'm even further back on that brush. Even further back. Guess what? It gives me a lighter stroke than this. This is attack mode. That, that's I'm not looking for attack mode. I want if I do that, that means I'm going to lose out on a lot of this texture here. So just like on the bottom section, I'm relying on some of that pearl white to provide me with color shifts. Be curious to see, and I'm going to be at Gen Con this year in the Badger booth, so I may have to try mixing some of this in with the, oh, the, the, the ghost tints, see what happens. So since this guy is almost more I don't want to say barnacled. And he's he's a little bit crusty. You know, he's he's a wear shark. He's and I can still so let's see what what this looks like. Got this leg compared to that. So see how kind of flat that is. As you can see we're starting to develop some texture here and some shading. And as always I can I can add more of the pearl white. See now I'm dragging the brush process that I just put fresh new paint on there. So again, not a dry brush. And what I can do is do some real gentle glazes over the top of this. In in some of the different colors, maybe some greens. So again, we're still still not an hour in, but we've identified a successful experiment. And now we're starting to starting to really get some texture and boy, yeah, see now you can, now you can see I think especially yeah i can I can see I can see the opal that opal look to it, so let's get this guy a little bit more stable here. I'm working on the shoulder, just bringing out a little bit more of this. So what I will do is focus primarily on this side. So I can, when this ends, you can see the difference. And there's already a substantial difference. 
this is also going to, yeah, see, here's my opal color. I'm going to grab a little more of that tire. See, I'm not even necessarily completely mixing it together on the brush. And this is where I'm going to go back and forth a little bit, blur that line. I don't necessarily want a super sharp, you know, here's where this starts, here's where this ends. I want it to be more of a mystery. And as I, as I do this little bit here, I can really see the effect that's having everywhere, that, that pearl color. So again, that's, that's pearl white from Reaper. Check that out. It's, looks like it's time to put a little bit more out on the palette. So again, this is it looks like it's dry brushing, but it's most definitely not. There's way more going on than just that. Now if you're more comfortable with that, that's fine. So see that, that shine that it's got there? It's not actually wet, that's the ogus here. You can see look at how dead that is by comparison, but here it's poof got a little bit of sparkle to it oh my goodness yeah this really it's gonna also stand out from the base because the base will not have any of the pearl white on it I suppose it would have been interesting to have that on some of the seashells so I'm gonna go straight pearl white I want to see what happens now that I've got some of the darks in And with each with each layer that I do with this, so it's it, like I said before, it's making it lighter. But now it's also making it that much more sparkly. Sparkly sharks, yeah, I know that kind of sounds weird. So here we go. I'm gonna move this over. Here, got it centered pretty well on the face. Yeah, that's that's doing what I was hoping. Now, now it's interesting because even in my head, this well, it's it's late here. I've been painting a long time. This is probably about hour. 12, 13, 14, whatever you want to call my, my hours of painting just today. But I'm already starting to think, well, where else could I use this? What other applications are there for this? Could I mix this with water effects? Especially like my, my lizard man that's, that's jumping in like a swamp type thing, and he's making a splash thing. So instead of just using white uh, for terrain, also. So anytime I want to have sort of the white caps, should I maybe use? Yeah, look at look at the difference there. Yeah, that's really it's really making a difference. And then the nifty thing is that it's not, I was worried that it would just look like metallic paint, but it definitely doesn't just look like metallic paint. It's I mean, if you've ever seen fish up close, they just, there's a translucency to them. And I know sharks don't, they don't have scales the way fish do, obviously. But I think it's still going to make this guy look a little bit different. And I can even see now, too, where... Sorry, that wasn't on camera. I'm putting a little bit more of this and where there's, where there's less. You got, you got a nice little transition there. I can smooth this out. I just took a little bit of the secret weapon. 
Oh, which one is that? That's the uh, rubber highlight. So if I feel it's a little too rough. Could tone it down. So this is interesting, I guess, to think about that it's going to be more than just, say, toning down a color that might be too light, but it's also going to be how much do I tone down the pearl effect. Yeah, this is nifty. Now I'm also going to be at Reprecon. So I'm for sure going to have to try and find some I think I've got a few of these few Reaper sea creatures if they've got any probably they got a bunch of the bones I think for sure I'm gonna have to try this out yeah I'm gonna have to try this out at ReaperCon so people can see this little experiment happen live so what I'm, I'm doing here is I'm building up these lighter tones I'm going to shade over the top of them also so they start if they're starting to look really bright to you a couple things going on first you're just you're seeing the lights bouncing off of them for one thing that that's the effect that the pearl weights having I think this is the other reason I want to do this side because see my picture up in the left hand corner and you can see on that one on the illustration there is there's some shininess on that and now can you see that I think so so see here we had some of the light around the dark we'll, s we'll see if we leave it that way I may like I said change can happen at any time here you so I am going to continue this a little bit here I'm just going to do the whole head see how I've got plenty of paint in them I'm just kind of inching my way up to the, and as I drag this across it see how it's just a reveal just a bit more texture Got my brush nice and flattened out. So you don't you don't notice this texture on here right away. So I'm gonna water that down. Water that down and it's it's still so sort of that stippling, scumbling And boy, most of it's it's funny because to me, yeah, see see how that transitions a little bit. That's that's not the wet paint effect. That is the pearl effect. I guess that's what I'll have to call it. I think maybe when you're trying to do some alien type skin, maybe oh yeah, maybe on Zinch type stuff you know some some chaos stuff or whatever or let's say a slanish maybe so instead of you know the, the metallic look maybe here let's try some of this tire black I'm gonna throw some of that out because it's pretty much as dark as the gray liner but as you're going to see, see how that little bit, little bit more green? Don't want the colors to get boring. So back to my pearl white. Touch of it into this. So that's definitely a little more green. And get it to where you can see it. Because it was... I, I could see a lot of different transitions in my in my grays, but I just I want some more. And this this again give it a more of a greenish, greenish blue. You can see this is red up here. Oh, well, 
it's not red. Um, people are going to say, what the heck is he talking about? It's all gray. Now it's more of a reddish gray. And here, now there's some blue. A little more blue. A little more blue here. Now the reason I'm trying to get some blue down here is my base has some yeah, almost this kind of shade of blue here so yeah this is a nice dark pearl blue here that we used a, a weathering paint for it's, it's people say like you're supposed to paint tires with that well it was painted a shark's hand with that even though sharks don't have hands well I suppose evolutionary wise they you get the fins are sort of well basically hands so this foot you can't really see but while I got this color out I'm just gonna do this back in here and a little bit of my so this is almost kinda watery here And I just wanted to restore a few darker areas. So not everything is lighter. And again, to tone down some of these transition points. So I'm going to put this uh, again, tire black here. Put some of this back out. see what we get here. I'm going to darken this down. It's stuff just like the Vallejo metal medium. When you add it to these things, it, it tends to lighten them up. The shoulder there was getting a little bit light. And tone it down. And now, hopefully, hopefully you can see this blue. I, I just don't know if you can see it and I apologize if, if it any effect things like this sometimes are they're tough to get get to show up on camera. Uh, the what is that the green stuff world chameleon paints the the color shift paints you virtually have to show them in a twirling video. You can't still photos don't really show you. You can vaguely see there's a bit of a transition vaguely so here I'm going to get some of this blue color here on the on tail like that on that fin the leading edge of the dorsal here So this this is a very fun combination. I don't. I would imagine Reaper still makes that pearl white. Hopefully, this won't be another case where they've either discontinued or are thinking about discontinuing, and I have to barge in there and say, no, no, you have to save that because we just found a use for it. Just leave it to me to take the weirdest stuff and find some kind of purpose for it. So now we're about an hour in, and we've really started to establish a few things. We established kind of the general lights and darks, but now we're adding shimmer to this. So this is that same tire black with a little more of the pearl white added. I'm essentially trying to set this up actually for for a few glazes. So the, the idea is you make it 
A little bit lighter than it has to be. And then you go over the top with your glaze. Like that tones it down, darkens it down. Mutes it a little bit. Since I just drag this over the top, I'm essentially highlighting with shimmer at this point because this color is really not actually lighter than what's already there. And here I'm, I'm trying to follow the illustration a little bit too, not just the photographs. I see a bit of here. I'm going to grab some. I see this even this is still active. So on that the picture in the upper right hand corner I see something like this. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get to the other side and mark that before I forget that, just like so. So back to this, I'm gonna Strengthen a few. Guess what I'm gonna do? See, it's just gonna be a quick little, quick little glaze of that. It actually still has some of the pearl color in it, so I won't lose my effect. Might do a similar thing in here. So you never know. With me, a glaze can happen at any time. A glaze can break out just about anywhere, anytime. Now, just about anything can break out anytime, anywhere. So I've basically been using the same beat up. You can see all that paint pile up in there. Here's a little little hint what I use to clean these: just rubbing alcohol. Same stuff I use on my airbrush. All right. Put that away. I'm going to grab one of my less beat up ones here. I think my gray liner is still. I need to put some some gray liner back out on the palette. Just get some out there. Get this off of here. And. I wish I could point, but you won't. You wouldn't see what I was pointing at. Get the eye over here, cause that's pretty much dark, and I need the context of that. I don't think I'm gonna use the pearl stuff on that. So just do that, and now. Some of those markings along here. So I, I did the one little marking there, so I'm going to pick one here. Kind of joins in the shadow area there. Can do something similar here. So I got maybe too much, but you can see how liquid that still is. It's almost, again, like a, like a dark glaze in a way. So I'm gonna, it's all about, see, this now does not have quite as much water in it. And I'm just going to, so now I can sharpen up that edge, but only in places, and then... I'll let that fade away. Back here, we'll do something similar along the top edge of that anterior fin. Do some of that. Working our way back to the tail fin. 
And I'm kind of making some glazes here. I always have a sponge handy so I can sponge away excess. And I look at my picture real quick here. Uh, yeah, there's. I'm going to do a few small little dots back there. So hopefully you can see that on the tail there. Now there's one other thing that I was hoping to accomplish with this, and it looks like I have. Now I've got a texture difference here where the dark darker line that I put it does not have has barely any of the pearl white in it and then that was done on purpose so see I'm, I'm starting to restore some of my darker shadows here this is my that this is my tire that tire black and in here we're going to do some some glazes and you see how some of the little bumps and barnacle type things there those how those start to emerge again so I basically dabbed all the paint off of the brush down just scumbling this along and wipe it away with my finger So that's why in some places I made it almost lighter than it needed to be. I, now right now probably just because we've got shiny wet paint on top of the pearl white it may not we're just going to have to let that dry so that you can get a better look at it. I'm going to do that same thing up here. Gotta make sure I have my some of the gray. I'm going to darken this down. Take some of this away. So I just I just basically dabbed the brush on my arm. So I'm able to remove some of the paint there. So in many ways you're, you're being introduced to some watercolor style technique so up here towards that snout again get the paint out of there and then push some of that around and what we'll do is I'll let that settle it certainly looks a lot different than this again kind of a flat it's very flat not a whole bunch of color to it and then here we've got shading, we've got color, we've got all kinds of fun stuff going on. So I'm going to do a little bit of glazing here. It's doing a couple things. Yeah, it's, it's glazing things darker, but it's also taking a little bit of the sheen away from the pearl. I'm really going to be curious to see what, how this photographs and what that's going to look like. Uh, again, that, that photo you see in the upper right there, you can see there's basically some shimmer to that. I'm trying to, trying to replicate that as best as I can. So yeah, my, I kind of pop this thing. The pin is starting to spin a little round, around a little bit, but let's get some some red liner here. So I'm going to get some color in the interior of the mouth there so that it's not too dark. I'm going to throw a little clear red. I don't want to get too reddish with this. That's about enough. That's about as red as I want it to be. Now let's get... See, I don't know how much of this you can see. So I'm just going to get this. It's just got to...
get this glaze down in here just to get some shadow in there get it away from the blue I think I've got that filled and now around the rows of the teeth that can always take a sponge there and get rid of some of that getting right up in here so all of a sudden now that lighter color now it looks even more light so that's also I needed this context here because I'm adding all these lighter shades to it not really knowing how dark the dark is going to be and you can see it, it's red-ish well, it's not super red. Teeth have a little bit of a yellowish tone to them, so... That is... That's enough of that. Go back to my gray liner here. I'm just going to hit this eye while I'm here. Just waiting for the mouth area to dry a little bit. I'm going to grab just whatever uh, kind of a tannish type color here. I think this is one I use. I think Griffin Tan is a color that I use in my shaded base coat class pretty often. Just get that on some of these teeth here. And then I'm just going to lighten it with that, the original grayish white so they're not too yellowish looking. If you're wondering why I'm doing this while the red is still wet, well, that's because I'm hoping to actually get a little wet into wet blending. You know, now that I think about it, Reaper does have a wear shark. Now it's not as big as this guy. Unless maybe they've made a new one. But they've got a yeah, they've got I know there's a wear shark. Maybe he's probably in the bones, so I will see if I can secure one of those at ReaperCon. You can see the dramatic effect this is having on our pearl white here. Now you've got a dark, flat color next to a, and it's warmer, uh, all things relative, to that the, all those cool grays that we've been applying all of this time. So here we're doing the interior teeth, and the idea is that it blends so I don't have to do quite as much light to dark shading on these. It's, it's, the idea is I'm taking away several layers of light over dark that I would normally have to do. Now these interior surfaces, I don't think you can see any of that, so I won't bog down too much in that. So I can I can see a few of these here, so I'm just gonna try and get some of that interior space. There you go. I'll set this down. And I'm just trying to look at some of my references here. Where's my so that original, what is it, aircraft gray? Just a Light bluish gray, we'll throw some of that out there. And let's see what happens. Yep, when we mix it in with here, so it lightens it. But now it, it's got, see, a little bit of grayishness to it. I think I've got this where you can see it. I also have to be able to look through my magnifier, guys, so... I, I do apologize if the angle is 
not quite so optimal for you. See how this starts to lighten these up, but they get a little less yellowish. A little less yellowish. Because if I had just used, I'll say white, to lighten those, it would have kept, it just would have been a lighter tan. This is a lighter tan, but it's also a touch cooler. See these interior, I don't want to highlight those too much. So let's sweep this around back to the side we've been working on. Here. And I might, I might go in with some maiden flesh here to do the final layers of light on these. Usually when I want to add some texture to things like teeth or the inside of a mouth, I'll use the secret weapon water effects. That that tends to, it's not just about making it glossy, it adds almost like a perceptible film over it. See these teeth, they have a bit of shading on them even though and I didn't have to work super hard to do that. And this is this another color, this is my other off-white. I always have, here's another one, and I might, I'll probably bring this out here for some of my lightest lights. I think it's called Maggot White, and then this one's Maiden made Flesh. They both essentially serve the same purpose. They're white. Now look at how much lighter that is. This this is the advantage of kind of starting in the middle, work your way darker, and then coming back around to some of your lighter lights. See the difference? That's a bit lighter. I've got a a decent transition on the teeth from dark to light. It looks a little bit more natural because we pretty much started out with the same reddish tone that's in the mouth. Now I know with, with the shark eyes they, they tend to have kind of the big black pupil there or whatever and then there's a little kind of off on the like to the to the back of it when they're sort of moving their eyes a tiny bit you can see some white along the edge. I don't know if I'll be able to do that here or if I'm I'd probably want to find some more references specifically for that. And if if I'm as I'm adding this lighter core here I also get to add a little bit of water to it it's not quite so super does it color or cover as much and that gives me a little little room for maneuver here so that's why I'm watering that down now I do have obviously the the Windsor Newton brushes all that sort of stuff but can see I can do a fair amount of fine things with these brushes. So there's there's some chompers there, yar. And I think I will now go for a final bit here. So I think we are roughly an hour and a half in, maybe not quite an hour and a half. I always forget to start up my stopwatch when I'm doing one of these recordings it's different in a, in a Facebook live or YouTube live there's a there's a counter for you it actually tells you how long you've been you've been on 
So this this is doing the job here. It's it's giving me a little more shape. Once you notice, I didn't get into this until I really established the basics. And poof, like so. Here we are. Now something like this. I, I know I think sometimes people have asked. You know, I still have at least a few hours just on, on the base yet to go to make that fully to what I want it to be. So I'm going to try some of the maggot white out here with some of the pearl. See what kind of lights that I can add. So back to the pearl white. And this guy here, I'll still be spending hours on him doing refining and details that I just can't do with, I don't want to say the distraction, but I can't get in the ideal position to be able to reach some of these things. So that there will still be at least another three, four hours on this guy at, at minimum, maybe more. And then, then if you include the base and everything else, so again, at least four to six more hours on this guy. Now, if, if he was a regular miniature size, eh, that's different. But as you can see, he's fairly huge. Do I have... I still have some dark left here. That is, I need some... Again, I need some context here. A little bit of that blue over the top. And here in the eye, I've got, I've got to get some... No, I'm going to do it on the bottom. I'm going to paint almost like a gemstone. So I'm letting just the color I'm using now mix in there. That's that's it. That's enough. Go back to my lights here. And just like I did with the gray liner. So this this is where I'm starting to focus in more on some details. This is where the whole process kind of starts to slow down, relax a little bit. It, it, it starts out as you can see it's it's pretty frenetic. There's a lot of activity moving around quickly but that's that's how I approached my 2D art you had to establish the fundamentals of your picture as soon as possible establish a structure I like to call it a, a foundation a lattice work because when you're going to build whatever the skyscraper thing you're not going to start out with drywall and, and carpets and, and glass. You're starting out with concrete, with steel girders. So we've got here. Yeah, that's a little bit better for you to see. Turn around this way. And you can see, so we have the, the basic construct of it here. But since We've started to add some of that finery around it. Just gonna water this down just a touch. So this this is why see like here that the stick is practically, you know, poking into the camera, it's messing with the focus a little bit. Uh, on some of the other videos that I've been working on. I've tried to eliminate that. 
I just while I've got this here I want to get this side of the face done because it, it's such an important element here well not done but more refined and that's the other thing I tell people is you can add as much refinement as you want you don't have to spend hours and hours extra on on some especially maybe if it's one of those the bones wear shark or whatever you're not gonna want to spend eight hours on that I mean, I'd, I'd still spend a substantial amount of time on it it's I don't mind painting bones things I've figured out some ways of getting rid of the mold lines that is that's not too bad there I can see it I need to soften some things down here so hopefully you will be able to also find other uses for the pearl white I've been using them on headlights for my, my historical vehicles where say it's a resin kit or whatever and the headlight is basically just this blob of metal that goes on the figure and not much else you'll notice that on my great white shark the only thing that's white or, or color that even had white in the name is, is the pearl and it is yeah it's white but it's not, it's not an opaque white that's really going to cover things it's that uh, semi-translucent and that is obviously what gives it the shimmery effect oh, I guess you can't I wasn't even going to bother with this I didn't think you could see it I just uh, want to work in a few shapes here so I don't, I don't want to encourage that whole work on just one part of it and stay there and I'm always trying to get people to to move around their figures so I think oh, there's a little bit of a little bit of my color left there I think you can yeah you can you can just see the bottom of that foot sticking out over there and just going right over the top here and let's let's go back to the tire black I'm gonna develop some things wow I just got a neat interesting view here looking this way as it was laying there on the table so there, there's a lot of that with the warm gray here so I'm gonna add in touch of the tire black here always make sure I've got plenty of my previous colors to work with I'm sort of again doing that that scumbly type thing but now with a finer tip Just like so. Same thing here. I get some of these areas. You, you may just not be able to see what I'm doing, and I apologize for that. But I'm trying to get some of this bluish, bluish green down into the crevices here. And if it gets a little too too much, I'm gonna get that in, in the glaze mode and 
wipe some away. On the hand over here. So I know I, know I said I wasn't going to mess with this side too much, but oh, hey, I lie. This one, yeah, so it's. I'm, I'm glad that I was able to introduce this other color because you can. I just want to do a bit of a review here so you can see the difference in the temperature of this. So you've got, see this warm, warm gray here. And as we add some of that blue, so now it starts to look a little bit more like what we got on this side. We'll do some more refining here. And so there, there's a few ways, a few ways to glaze. And this is one where it's See, I'm adding these little dots here. The eye, it's probably not even going to register the eye, but I just, I don't want to lose. There's so much fun texture on this. I don't want to lose that texture. So the gills here, they need a little more refinement. I'm going to do that. Hopefully, I st yeah, I still got some of this that I can grab and bring that down. Because I'm also trying to reflect and I talk about this with metallics all the time but it, it's important in other things too the environment that it's in. So let's, let's grab that base wherever I've got it here Let's see, what did, I, what did I do with that thing? Well, I'm just going to grab the other one. But you can see now that the blue and gray that's on this, I wanted to make sure it was reflected on, on Mr. Shark here. So some of these little barnacle type things. Let's make sure you can see that. And I can do it with this brush. Now let, let's say you just you want to see it's a smaller brush. Everybody always wants to see me using a smaller brush. Well we got them. You know, the old Windsor Newton series seven. And good. We're in the right spot here. So and this this is the part where it's it's gonna be more tedious. I didn't want you to see me doing this for two hours. That's that's not going to be terribly useful for you. That, that I think you can figure out this for yourself. Oh, it does make a difference. That's uh, okay. Still got it here. Good enough. But I also want. Where is my gray liner? Now we're going to do the gray liner here because I want to get everything to get too bluish. See how this is a warmer, look at how much warmer that is. That's almost, it looks like red by comparison to that greenish blue. And bam, now you can see it. So the color is at the the lightness is not all that much different, but hopefully it, it registers here as being more of a warmer gray. 
It's cover temperature. I, I know there's been a lot of non-metallic discussion lately, and I try to talk that. That's really important. Reflectivity, and one of the ways you can reflect things is to reflect what's warm and cool. So here we got this sort of a, a scar here on the fin. Then just again trying to add a little bit of texture. I, I see it in the Audubon style rendering. So we're doing that. And most of and most of what's being added here is it it's got shininess to it. It's not so much lighter. And then some of the gray liner at the top here in a little more of a pure form. And make a transition here like so. So we need some, some dark here. So we have plenty of light. Need to reinforce some darks. And what's in, as I as I glaze over the areas that have the pearl white, it doesn't wipe it out completely. It, some of it remains behind. Make this part here leading into the dorsal fin. Give that a little more of a, a little more of a light effect. I don't want to do too much of a highlight on the dorsal fin. Just and now this is back to the to the blue here. So I'm going to add more of the pearl white because there's there's some texture right here that I want to bring out. Yeah, that's that's pretty fun. Something when it's something larger like this, I, I think maybe Kathy and I had this discussion. There's you have to find a way to well, there's this much texture, you have to make people be able to see it, but you also have to let it recede, it can't dominate and overpower the overall sculpt. So, what I'm trying to do now is just find some of those. Fortunately, corrections, whatever you want to call it, is, is just a glaze away. It's just a glaze away. I can always tone them back down again. So I will... I'll do some research just to make sure that this pearl white still does exist in the Reaper line. I think it may just be lurking there. Kind of like the liner paints were lurking there and the clear paints that I love so much. So let's compare the two sides. So you can see the left side has a lot developed and the right side not so much. I guess the other thing I'm trying to do is, is create sort of a 
the, the sun or he's being lit from the, the sun kind of shining down through the water. So I'm going to do a few little dots of somewhat lighter stuff here on the shoulder. And the gills need a little little bit of shading here. They I don't want them to get too white. I'm gonna work on the underside of this eye just to give that a little more shape. around the edge of the eye. I think I need I need to get a little bit of that's a little too solid of a, a line there. Let's break that up a bit too. Yeah, that was just too solid of a line. So you can tell that the line along here is, is broken up. Now, eh, what the heck, I will find my secret weapon. Yeah, let's do this. So it's realistic water here. This is originally, it's intended pretty much for the eye. I'm not going to do it on the teeth just yet. Now that's something, uh, again, I might find later. If I don't like it, I can always just take my dull coat and go over the top and get rid of it. But... What I'm going to do here is get myself a brush, get some of this, and you can see how it's thicker. It's got some thickness to it. And I got my eye here. It's going to do a couple of things. Remember, it's, it's all about the, the texture. Because we've got the texture, let's put the pearl. So now we've got the eye has a little glassiness to it. See how it f it follows all of my lights. So if I if I paint in that highlight, see how that, that's moving? It's moving almost like the eye follows you along. It's You, you evolve. Uh, I, I think it's some people, they find the thing that, that sort of works for them and they just they stick with that and stick with that. I try to push that a little bit, maybe find some things that are different, just just like this pearl stuff. I, I really do enjoy that. It, that looks, that is the effect I was hoping that it would have. So I, I got out some red liner. So it's almost like a purple here. I was just looking at the the mouth on the photos and even on here I just I want to get a little bit of shape hopefully that's somewhat on screen and same thing here you notice I'm sticking with a lot of my same colors so instead of a red this is more of a purple here kind of a gray down for I've got a little little notch there a little bit of shape so now there's some transition here yeah you can see that better I think you'll be able to see it more easily on this side That's where a lot of the figures are. Uh, there's an effect they want to do or whatever, and it just doesn't show up on one side. So here I'm carrying the purple color out a little bit, and this is the other thing I'm going to try and do. You may not be able to see it too well on this side. But trying to get a little bit of that 
red liner into the gills. I think you'll definitely be able to see it easier on this side. Let's take away some of the excess here. Sorry if I'm bashing into the camera. Again, this, this figure is it's got tails and fins and arms and legs and all kinds of stuff sticking out, so it makes it a little bit more of a challenge. So I'm definitely, yeah, I like that that effect there. And where's my pearl white here? I know I keep referring to it as opal, but eh, it's kind of the effect. I'm gonna add a little bit of that to it. I think I've got it where you can see it. Carry some of this down here. Even a bit into there. Alright, I still have my original blue coat, so yeah, you can't even tell hardly that a bit of Purple color has been added here, so I'm going to swing this back around to the other side, do the same thing. It's the whole, the whole idea here is to, yeah, see there's a little, little variation in that now. So I'm going to bring it over onto this side, do the same thing. There's, there's a ton of blue here. There, that's my magnifier light that's actually hitting my face. And then that crashes into the camera. That is the, how close quarters this is. You know, people keep wanting to see a camera of my face, and there is just no room for additional cameras here. Yeah, that that needed this. Needed this little dash of. See how that's reddish in there. It really needed that. So we're just about two hours in. I'm, I'm going to see what other things that I can bring out here to show you. Now this is one of the last things I wanted you to see was introducing a little bit different color. So, so see now it, maybe you can see it there. It was it was so so much blue. I'm gonna do a little bit of again red around the eye here. Now it's not red, it's it's basically a grayish purple. What it's gonna do, it's it's a little artistic license. It creates some color unity. But it's going to add just a, maybe a slight extra bit of interest to the face here. And I may even do a bit on the top. So, yeah, that's... Uh, actually, this has turned out to definitely be my favorite of these fish critters. Yeah, I definitely want to do a few few of these dots red. So I'm going to do a quick transition here. And again, this is the spawn of Shark to Pete. So this is the Kickstarter here. And as I scroll down, so this is their version of the shark. So I'll go back to my original scene here. And while I've got this reddish purple, I'm going to continue to add some of these, especially again in the, in the neighborhood of the head slash face. So hopefully that probably all just registers as gray. Probably all just registers as gray because that that's kind of what your eye is supposed to do. So I don't want to do too much of that. Even that I might have to might have toned some of that back too. Which I can do right away. I still had a little of my blue left. 
So I did that. I, I thought it'd be neat. I just had to tone it down a little bit. So we've got our face. You can see the difference. I didn't do too much more to this eye than I did to this one, but it just has a whole different look to it. So I want to say thanks for thanks for watching. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel and if you do the like, the share, that sort of stuff. It it helps other people to find some of these lessons and maybe get a little bit of help themselves. If you can also you know give me a little uh, assistance on Patreon there that. That helps me, obviously. It gives me a little more time to do these because they, from here, there's there's going to be several hours of editing and rendering and the rendering while it's doing that. Of course, that's really sucking down some serious computer power and I can't really do too much else while it's doing that. So, any any contribution is helpful. I do have the new pledge levels up. So the army painter ones, you got the dark sword ones. So I just added a little more a little more juice there. This is, see how that's kind of what we started with. This is what we what it looked like maybe about 20 minutes in. Since then we've added a whole lot more. So thanks again for watching and be sure to catch some of the other other fun videos that I've gotten tutorials. Thanks a lot.